Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing Cosette's and Lagrange's theorem. Okay, so so far all that I've told you is just recap, okay? And we've recapped two different concepts here. We've recapped these concepts of all elements of the group, uh, either left multiplied or right multiplied by a certain element of the group, and I've recapped this concept of subgroups. Now, what we're going to do is combine those two things together to arrive at cosets, basically. Okay, so what I'm going to do is chuck at you then the concept of the, a left coset and a right coset of uh, a subgroup, capital H, under an element, little a. So really, it is a very similar idea to here, but what we're going to do is replace the capital G here with the subgroup, capital H. So let's have a look at what we're going to do. Okay, right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some little a, once again, which is an element of capital G. So you take an arbitrary element of the group capital G, okay, and what I'm going to define then is two sets, okay, the set AH and the set HA in the same spirit as I defined these ones up here, okay. And this one here, where we've got A on the left of the uh, capital H, is going to be called the left coset of the subgroup H. So I'll give it its form title. So the left coset of the subgroup capital H under uh, the element little a, okay? Uh, and of course, you could choose different little a's to do this with, so it is important to specify which little a you are using. So this is going to be called the left coset of the subgroup capital H under the element little a. Okay, and this one is going to be called a very similar thing, we're just going to replace the left here with right, basically. So it's going to be the right coset of H under little a. So just copy out all of that, but replace the left uh, with right here. Okay, so that's nice. We now know the names of these things. What actually are they? Well, again, they are sets, okay? And they're going to be subsets of the group capital G, okay? So let me now define them, okay? So uh, this set A, H, the left coset of capital H under little a, is going to be defined to be equal to the set of all the elements of capital H left multiplied by this element little a. So it's going to be all things of the form a composed with little h, where little h is an element of capital H. And hopefully you're now seeing the parallels with what we've already seen. This is very similar to what we've seen over here. All that's changed is that rather than doing it with the entire group, I am now doing it with a subgroup rather than the entire group. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through every element of the subgroup and I'm just going to left multiply it by this element A. Okay, I'll get a whole bunch of answers and sticking those into a set together and that's what is called the left coset of the subgroup capital H under the element little a. Okay, now just like there was a lovely interpretation of what this set actually meant, there was a picture of it, we have a picture, it means this row, okay? There is a lovely picture for what this means as well, so let me now draw you the picture of what this actually means. So once again, we'll have to draw out the composition table again. Okay, now I need to mark on my subgroup, capital H, because that's now suddenly really important. Okay, so once again, I'll copy this out here. So here is my subgroup capital H, and I've suppo I'm supposing that I've clustered all the elements of capital H together, okay, so that I can think of uh, them as all being together and think of this subsection of the composition table as being the composition on the subgroup capital H. Okay, so once again I'll mark this out in red here, okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this arbitrary element, little a, from the group. Now, at no point did I say that little a had to either be an element of the subgroup or not be an element of the subgroup. It could be any element within capital G, okay? So it could end up actually being an element within the subgroup. It could just so happen that you pick an element, little a, within the group that ends up being within the subgroup or it could end up that it's not within the subgroup.
Okay, for the basis of this picture, I will suppose that it is not within the subgroup, simply because it makes the picture look nicer when we're first drawing it. But you could have it in the sub being within the subgroup, and we'll come back to that point later on. So I'll put my little a here, okay, and of course little a will have an entire row in this composition table that will be dedicated to it here. Okay, so now let's think up, what does this set actually represent? What does this left coset of H under A actually represent in this picture? This means all elements of the subgroup capital H here left multiplied by the element little a. So what does that mean? Well, hopefully it's apparent that that means this sub-portion of the row corresponding to A that is underneath capital H. So let me just colour this in. So all of the elements in this subsection of the row corresponding to little a, okay, uh, are going to be um, in this set, okay, because they correspond to the element little a multiplied by all of the elements of capital H. So what you're doing is you're taking little a and you're going through all of the elements of capital H, all of the columns corresponding to elements of capital H, and you're asking what is a composed with those elements, and the answers are in this section here. So this is what is meant by the left coset of H under A, basically. That set there. Okay? And because we know capital G is a group, okay, we know capital G is a group, then we know that this row here contains every element of the group once and only once. So that means that the elements that appear in this little section here have to appear only once. You can't have any elements appearing more than once. So that's something again that we'll come back to later on. Okay, so now let's uh, define what a right coset of H under A is and we'll put it on this picture as well. So now what we want to do is capital H little a like so. And again you might be able to hopefully guess what this is equal to. Uh, this is all things of the form little h composed with little a, where little h is allowed to vary over the entire subgroup capital H. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go through all the elements of the subgroup capital H and you're going to left multiply them by the element little a. You're going to get a whole bunch of answers and you're going to stick all of those answers into a set and that's the set that we mean by the right coset of H under a. Okay, now hopefully you'll be able to add this onto the picture for yourself now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through all of the elements of capital H and this time we are right multiplying them by little a. Now that means that we need the column dedicated to little a. So let's say here, this is the column dedicated to little a here. Okay. Uh, and now we don't want the entire column dedicated to little a because the entire column would be g little a, okay? It would be every element of the group uh, right multiplied by little a. We just want all the elements of the subgroup right multiplied by little a, so we want this subset of the column here, okay, which I will colour in in vivid purple here, and that will be all of the elements of capital H right multiplied by little a, i.e. it will be the right coset of uh, capital H under little a here. Okay, right, so there is our picture of the right coset of capital H under little a then. Okay, so there is the definition of the right coset and the left coset of a subgroup capital H under little a. So let's now start talking about uh, these left and right cosets to get a better understanding of what they actually are and what they contain. So the first thing to say is that absolutely always these left and right cosets of the subgroup capital H under the element little a are always going to contain the element little a itself. So little a is absolutely always going to be an element of the left coset of H under little a, and little a is always going to be an element of the right coset of capital H under little a. Okay, absolutely always. Now how can I guarantee that? Well, capital H is a subgroup of capital G. Now all subgroups have to contain the identity element, so one of the elements of capital H is absolutely guaranteed to be the identity element. That means that when you are going through uh, all um, left or right multiples 
of the elements of um, the subgroup by this element little a, you are guaranteed at some point to hit the identity. So for instance, in the left coset of H um, under A, you will have the composition A composed with the identity at some point. So at some point, we'll have little h is equal to the identity. We'll therefore get little a composed with the identity, and that will, of course, be little a, which implies, therefore, that little a is an element of the left coset of H uh, under A. OK, so that's for the uh, left coset of H under A here. Now let's think about the right coset of H under A, or well, similarly, um, now what we are going to do if we're considering the right coset of H under A is we'll have the identity this time right multiplied by little a, and of course we know that that's also little a, so that will be uh, within the right coset of H under A. Okay, so A, the element A itself, which you're using to generate these cosets, will absolutely always be within the coset itself. Okay, right, so that's uh, the first trivial thing to point out. The next thing to say is um, to distinguish between the cases where we are picking a little a that is within the subgroup and the cases where we are picking a little a that is not within the subgroup. Okay, right, so now what I'm going to do is go back to that case that I said I will come back to, which is what happens if we take uh, the left or right cosets of a subgroup capital H under an element little a, which just so happens to be within the subgroup itself. So this picture assumes that little a was not within the actual subgroup itself, but what would happen if little a was an element of the subgroup itself? Okay, what would we then be doing? We would be taking a, h, and h, a. Okay, now hopefully you can see you might be able to see that we're actually back to this situation up here, okay? Here, we were studying an element, little a, within a group, and we were uh, constructing this set, A capital G, where we were taking all left multiples of the elements of the group by the element A, and here we were uh, constructing this set G little a, where we were taking all right multiples of elements of the group by little a. Here, all I've done is change the notation to capital H now. I am taking all left multiples of the elements of this group, capital H. Forget that it's a subgroup. View it as a group in its own right. It's a set of symbols with a composition law defined on it. Okay, and I'm taking all left multiples of the elements of capital H by this element A, which is in the group itself. Okay, so this is the set containing all things of the form A composed with little h, where little h is an element of capital H, okay, so I'm taking all left multiples of the things in the group by another element in the group, okay. Right, uh, so if I actually draw this out in the composition table for the subgroup capital H, so here is the composition table for the subgroup capital H, so now what I've done is I've just pulled this red portion of the composition table for the group capital G out, and I've got rid of all this blue portion. Okay, so this now is just the red portion, because I don't need the blue portion anymore. Okay, and I have got some element, little a, which is within my subgroup, and I am effectively asking for all the elements in one of the rows of this composition table. I'm asking for all the left multiples of the elements of capital H by this element uh, little a, okay? And that's what this uh, left coset of H under A actually is going to be if A is an element of capital H. Now, of course, this is a group, so it obeys that property that we uh, looked at originally, which is that all the rows in the composition table of a group contain every element of the group once and only once. So this row must contain all the elements of the group, basically, which means that this set must actually be equal to the entire subgroup itself. Okay, and similarly for the right coset of H under A, what we'll then be doing is taking the column corresponding to A, and we'll be looking at all of the uh, elements of capital H right multiplied by little a, which is this column indeed, and we'll be looking at all of the entries in that column. And again, because capital H is a group in its own right, forget that it's a subgroup now, it is a group in its own right. Um, 
these rows and these columns must contain all elements of the group once and only once, which means that this right coset of H under A must also be equal to the entire subgroup capital H back again, basically. Okay, just like for any other group, basically. Okay, so if the element little a happens to be in the subgroup capital H itself, then these left and right cosets of H under A end up being the entire subgroup back again. Okay, in the next video, what we'll talk about is what happens if little a is not an element of capital H. And if little a turns out not to be an element of capital H, then it becomes more interesting. We will see that actually that means that um, these left and right cosets of H under A will actually be completely free of elements in the subgroup. They will not contain any elements that are within the subgroup capital H. They will be completely distinct from the subgroup. And that's going to turn out to be very, very powerful.